Good morning. Welcome back. We open our Bible to study an interesting topic we pick up today. We're going to kick and people are going to cry. They're going to turn off. They're going to call me a hater. Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, <coughs> forgive me, I got a sore throat, or Father Christmas, or Jesus Christ. <laughs> you say, oh, wow, wait a minute, what are you doing? This is dedicated to the born again Christian. I'm talking to you who are saved. I'm talking to you about Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, Father Christmas, or Jesus Christ. I don't expect a lost man to get this. I expect the person who is saved has got the Holy Spirit and a Bible. 1 John 2.18 Little children, it is the last time. As ye have heard that the Antichrist should come, even now, are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time? Revelation 4.11 John tells us there's many antichrists. Not just one. Many. And knowing that they're, they're here gives us we're in the last time. There are people, you know, there are earthquakes in diverse places, you know, and Obama, you know, that means Jesus Christ is coming, yes. Every new day is a day closer to the rapture. Every day that you wake up out of bed, you're, you're a day closer to, to Jacob's tribulation, Jacob's trouble. Every day that the sun comes up, you're closer to the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ. It's true. But in those days, yeah, earthquakes, yeah, violence, yeah, troubles in the schools, yeah. But also Antichrist. Not just Antichrist. Plural. Revelation 4.11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. God is worthy of glory. God is worthy honor God is worthy of power thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power it's my God it's my wonderful Savior he done everything for me <coughs> I'm going to do things for him because he's done things for me He's my all in all. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. No evolution. And for thy praise, the Lord. They are and were created. Everything that is. That's made by God. If it's not, it's never been. God didn't make it. But here it all is. Here I am, made by God, created by God. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to give God glory, honor, and power. Why am I here? And the answer is Revelation 4.11. I am to give God glory, honor, and power. You don't do that and you fail life. That is the reason why God made man. That is the reason why God made animals. That is why God made trees. For his glory, for his honor, and for his power. Look at the solar system. Go out on a, on a clear night. No lights. I'm talking about lights. You know, human lights. Get out in the darkness somewhere. Look up to the heavens. Look at all the things out there. And you're supposed to look up there and say, God made that. What a mighty, powerful God we have. That the earth's position is not too close to the sun that will burn up. And yet it's not too far from the sun that will freeze. 
and that the moon has been traveling its orbit around the earth without ever crashing into the earth, without ever moving. Because if the moon were to move, yay or nay, the earth would be out of focus. We would assume this to be about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> I say we assume. I'm talking to the born-again Bible-believing Christian. When we read Revelation 4 11, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. I would assume this to be about our Lord Jesus Christ. And not all Bible-believing Christians honor the Lord with glory, honor, and power. Let's get that down right now. Especially when we're talking about this subject about Santa Claus. And your children. This essay was not written to the unsaved person, but to the born again saved Christian. Evidence will prove or produce to the saved born again believer that sees nothing wrong with having Santa Claus or its practice. Or maybe you're a babe in Christ. You just got saved. You're recently saved. You're growing. Maybe you're maturing. You're newly saved. I do not insult you. But I do write to all of any age of being a Christian in Christ to know that is right and holy from that which is evil and wicked. I'm, I'm not, listen, you're a newborn babe in Christ. You are in a worldly church. You, circumstance you may believe in Santa Claus and have no idea no one's ever taught you now let me teach you maybe you're you're balancing on the fence yay or nay help me to push you to one side or the other in Revelation chapter 3 when speaking to the church age God says hot or cold <coughs> Lukewarm Christianity makes him sick. God wants you on one side or the other. He'd rather you be hot. What I want to do is when it comes about this subject about Santa Claus, I want to put the facts down. Just the facts, man. The truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Let's look at the truth of this person. And see who this person really is. And I'll let you be the judge. By the Bible. For what the Bible says about this man. Whether you're going to serve God or you're going to serve mammon. Leviticus 10.10. Leviticus 10.10. Now, I want you, as we, as you turn to Leviticus 10.10, I want you to notice the words that will show up in this report. Catholic will show up. <gasps> now, come on, bear with me now. Bear with me. Priest. <gasps> come on now, bear with me. And we're going to look at the truth, aren't we? Aren't we going to see this person who he already is? New York. Tradition. Image. And Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is sin? No. It just shows up in this man. And there are other words going to pick, but you know, so you picked out, you know, the religion and all that. And it's just... We've got, see, we've got 42 and a half pages. We've got two whole pages of sources, okay? You'll see why I picked those words. We can look at other, red. But, Notice those words that come to be. Now Leviticus 10.10. 10. And that ye may put difference 
between holy and unholy. Holy, what's righteous? Oh, let's put it like this. Holy God. Right? Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. Well, that's what's God. And unholy. What would be unholy? Satan. Evil. So, according to Leviticus, we're going to look at what's God and what's Satan. And there's no middle line. There's no middle of the road. It's either God or it's Satan, according to Leviticus 10.10. 10. Between unclean and clean. Is a pig clean or is he unclean? Did you wash him, clean him all up, or did he jump in the mud? Are your, is your dish clean or is it unclean? It can't be both. I don't know how you can have a plate that's in between unclean and clean. So Santa Claus is either holy or he's unholy. Either he's unclean or he's clean. Well, he helps. Yeah, we'll look at that stuff. We'll look into those things. But let the facts be made known. May you choose that which is holy. Oh, now see, now you're already going on the other side, but no. For God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Now, if by chance, if Santa Claus is holy, we find out him to be holy, all right, good. But if we find him to be unholy, <coughs> then we need to leave him behind. We ought not to be following him. Now, St. Nicholas. I will call him Mr. Nick Nicholas. In the Bible, a saint is one that has, on this side of Calvary, put his faith and belief in Jesus Christ as his Savior. John 3, Romans 10, Acts 8, and 16. No merits of self. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. A saved saint in the Bible is one that has believed on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried, and on the third day he arose again, according to the scriptures. I have put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. I'm a saint, and I'm alive. We're not going to Catholic doctrines. We're not going to Catholic teaching. Telling you, a saint in the Bible is someone who has believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, whether alive or asleep. I'm a saint. Now let me go further. Saint will be studied later as to living or dead. And we'll talk about that later. I have found nowhere in my examination of this report <coughs> of any recorded faith in Jesus Christ made by Mr. Nicholas. If there is, if Mr. Nicholas has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and is seated today at the, in heaven in glory, it has not been documented. I'm not saying Mr. Nicholas was saved. I'm not saying he wasn't saved. I couldn't find no documented proof that he received Jesus Christ as his Savior. Now, someone says he's a saint, but is he a saint by the Bible? I am not saying he is, and I'm not saying he's not saved. Just the information is not to be found. And I would think if somebody believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior somewhere, as popular as this gentleman is, I think it would be written somewhere that he would record in a diary, in a journal, or on his tombstone, or to his family that this man received Christ as his Savior. I'm not talking about a, a wafer. I'm not talking about as a drink. I'm talking about his personal satisfaction that he rests his soul in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That ought to be recorded somewhere. Now, you don't need to know the date. I happen to know my date that I was saved. There are people who don't know their date they're saved. They're, you can, oh, you don't know what... The, no, that's, I don't know what hour I was saved. I know it was afternoon. 
And I could even be wrong about that. Could have been the morning. But there is no documentation that this man ever received Christ as his Savior. What he did? Well, that's between him and God today. If he received Christ as his Savior, he's, go, he's, he's in heaven. I'm right here. If he did not receive Christ as his Savior, he's, he's tormenting in hell. I hope man, I don't I can't say I hope he's in heaven today because he's, he's already passed on. I must also include information about Mr. Nicholas that may be tales or stories. In many cases of the life and tales of Mr. Nicholas has no proof. They'll say something about Mr. Nicholas, and there is absolutely no proof. And the story itself will tell you. No one saw this. He did it in secret. And we will see this in the character that evolved from Mr. Nicholas to a man called Santa Claus. I don't believe in evolution. But Mr. Nicholas, Mr. Nicholas, the person that he is, the world, religion, has evolved this man to today's Santa Claus. In order to study Santa Claus, we've got to study the root of Santa Claus. And this root had to be this man called Nicholas, Mr. Nicholas. Mr. Nicholas may be in all aspects completely opposite of Santa Claus. But this is where the source comes from. The source of Christianity comes from Jesus Christ. And yet it's not lived like Christ in many Christians. The source of religions, its foundation is Satan. I don't mean by pick on this gentleman. I never met him. I don't know anything about him but what I read. But what I've studied, what I've seen, has already come to the conclusion something is mystifying about this man. Mr. Nicholas was born on March 15, 2000, 2000, excuse me, March 15, 270 A.D. And he died, here we go. December 6, 343 A.D. in his 70s. He had to be over 70 years old. Now, there are years that are give of his death. 346, 345, 352. They're not sure what year he died. Okay, that's a, that's a reasonable mistake. I can take you to graveyards today where there are no markings of the people because they was put in wood and the wood rotted. Most resources quote 343 A.D. So we'll take that. He was buried in his cathedral church. Oh, here we go. He was buried in his cathedral church. Mr. Nicholas was born on March 15th. 270 AD and died December 6, 433. He was buried in his cathedral church. Mr. Nicholas died of natural causes. December 6 is St. Nicholas Day. We're getting somewhere here. Remember one of those words? <coughs> since or so the Roman Catholic Church celebrates birthdays and death days if you were to do a search the Catholic Church on your calendar there are 365 saints to their saint days Every day of the calendar a Catholic has 
a saint that dared to whatever they would do. December 6th belongs to Mr. Nichols. That's his day. Acts 8-2. Now let me tell you, as you turn to Acts 8-2, I'm going to say it again. No Bible-believing Christian honors anybody as dead. We're not even to honor man. We're to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things for Thy pleasure. They are and were created. All right, if the Lord's to receive glory, honor, and power, why does this gentleman given a day to worship for glory, for his honor, and for his power on December 6th, and this may have nothing to do with Mr. Nicholas. This has to do with the church <coughs> giving this man one day that we're to give the worship of God to. Acts 8.2 A devout man men, a devout man carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. There were no great anything made for the saints of the New Testament. No Bible-believing Christian made a cathedral to Paul. Now, there may be a Catholic cathedral to Paul, but no Bible-believing Christian. No Bible-believing Christian ever made a necklace of the cross. Dead or alive, a Bible-believing Christian does not give the glory, the honor, and power to a man. That is reserved by Revelation 4.11 to the Lord. They mourn for their brother in the Lord. He's a friend. He's a, I don't know if he was a father. He was someone respected. And he died. We're going to miss him. Oh, man. Tears. 2 Thessalonians 4. You know, we weep, but we don't weep that we don't have to hope. We weep because we miss him. Nowhere in the New Testament is it said to build big or even small buildings for the name of a dead person. Now, caves were made or dug, but no cathedral. No one made the empty tomb of Jesus Christ a, a relic, or a symbol, or a pilgrimage. No Bible-believing Christian ever would have done that. Yet, but here's this man made by a church. He has a cathedral, and he has a day to worship. 1 Corinthians 3. So, what the church has done for this man... They've already raised and lifted him up to receive something that was supposed to be given to God. Mr. Nicholas died. He has no control of what people do with him and his name after he dies. But we're going to see in his life 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 19. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? I'm the temple of God. I have the Holy Spirit indwelling in me by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, like I just said, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are ye are? Now there are Muslims right now over on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. They are destroying temples, buildings, rocks, stones, wood. Who cares? But when they kill Christians, remove their head off their shoulders, Dip them into acid. Burn them. 
Then the Bible says, now, now they're destroying the temple of God. Not the buildings, the people themselves. There's a big difference. Him God shall destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Remember we looked at holy? Which temple ye are? I'm a holy temple. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Well, that, that, that defies nature. Become a fool so he can be wise? For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. How to fix a V8 car engine, God, who cares? How to put a door in a house? Oh, man. How to be saved and someone believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior makes all the angels in heaven rejoice. When a saved person dies and goes home to glory, that makes God happy. That's what God wants to know. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So we see foolishness, we see temple, we see holiness, we see wisdom, we see deceitfulness. We take 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 19 in this account of what we're studying. It's going to be remarkable for what we find. We're looking for holy, we're looking for unholy. The holy we want to keep, the unholy we want to get rid of. We want to look for deception. We've already seen Catholic. That's already shown up. And we've seen Catholic now take something that belongs to God and has given it to a sinner, to a man. Mr. Nicholas was Greek born and lived in Myra. Being called the Nicholas of Myra. <coughs> Excuse me. Capital N I K O L A S. The Nicholas of Myra. And also being a Greek bishop, priest, Roman Catholic Church. There it is. We've seen the church in his birth. We've seen the church in his death. We're seeing the church in his life. He was a Greek bishop of Myra and Lycia. L-Y-C-I-A. Mr. Nicholas was also known as the wonder worker of miracles. You sure he wasn't Pentecostal? Who worked miracles in the Bible? Jesus Christ. Who else worked miracles in the Bible? The prophets. Who else worked miracles in the Bible? The apostles. Miracle wonder worker. Catholic priest. If you're a Bible believing, born again, saved Christian, you know you've studied your Bible. You've already now should have already. They just bring up more hard evidence. This guy's unholy. By what I've already read. God could be saved. But there are saved Christians who do destruction to the work of Christ too. I don't know what this guy was. His reputation was of secret gift giving. What? Didn't Jesus say, I've done nothing in secret? 
Didn't the apostles do all the work openly? This guy has already been anti-Bible. Secret. Bishop. Paul tells Timothy a bishop is to be a husband of one wife. I haven't found this guy married. No, not Mrs. Claus. That comes later. She's invented later. There's nowhere where Paul gives about the bishop and his qualifications, the works of miracles and secret gifts. So we got a worker of miracles and secret gifts. Gift, miracles, gift, miracles. Looks Pentecostal to me. And this guy later on as Santa Claus can travel the whole world and talk many different languages. Oh boy. Now let's stick to one. I like to make this statement that there is no documented statements of Mr. Nicholas ever refuting, debating, or rejecting of any remarks or claims made about him. What I'm saying right now is there's nowhere written where Mr. Nicholas has said that's wrong. I did not do that. I am not that. I, uh, that's a lie about me. That's slander. Nowhere is it documented that Mr. Nicholas refuted what is being said now. So if he never refuted it, never rejected it, I got to assume by his own silence, he approved. He approved that he was called the wonder worker in America. He had for secret gift given that he was a Greek bishop. He was born where he was born. That, he, he proves all that by his silence. Because these claims were made while he was living. I'm not talking about after his death. This is while he's living. He not once is recorded to say it was false statements or tried to clear any unclear or tales in his name while he was alive. So we can assume without a statement by Mr. Nicholas, all that was said while he was alive were approved unless he stated otherwise. And I found no such statements or documents. I got a page and a half of sources that I've quoted from. Nowhere do I find Mr. Nicholas saying that the newspaper lied about me in his life. Nowhere do I find recording anybody in his family after he dies that, that no, that wasn't Uncle Nicholas. No, that wasn't my brother. That's a lie. Nowhere. If I were to find evidence documented that there was a refute by this man or somebody in his family that could stand up in a court of law, then, okay, we can erase that. His reputation was of secret gift giving. Now you know I'm going to hit home. Ever hear in a Baptist church, secret Santa Club, usually for the women? Three churches I've been in where they, the women had a secret Santa Club. Doesn't Why does Santa belong in the church? He doesn't belong in the church. And we're going to see after 44 pages, he doesn't even need to be mentioned in the church. And in 2000, what year was that? 2011, 2012, Santa, Secret Santa, was mentioned in a church, Baptist church. With a woman's club. I've already read the, this story. I wrote this thing. He don't belong in a Baptist church. But why do we do that which is of the world and not of God? The wise men brought 
Jesus gives. That's why they were wise. <clears throat> Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Romans 6 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 4 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given you the living water. There is, or if there is any gift in the Bible, and there is, three verses, it's not in secret, and it is Jesus Christ. Street preaching, door knocking, passing out tracts is never done in secret. Secret Santa needs to go. Luke 8, 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come aboard. If he did it, how shall it be known of him? How did they know if it was Mr. Nicholas? If he done it in secret, wait a minute, if he's done something in secret, how do they know it was him? Let's say I took $50 and I gave it to somebody at church for help. I put it in an envelope and just wrote their name on it and put it in the box. Who's going to know it was me to say, Stanley gave secret money out to people? So it's not really a secret if they know. A revelation ruins the secret. Once you find out who has done something in secret, it's, re it's revealed. Could it have been someone else and he was taking the credit? That's a possibility. I've had that happen. Have you ever done something for somebody and someone else said, hey, that was me? Again, there's no documentation. But the documentation is he, he gave secret gifts. Have you ever done something, like I said, no one else knew and someone's taking the credit for your deed? When Jesus worked miracles, it's another key word. Isn't it a miracle that you can travel the whole night, visit every good children's house, fill their tree up, eat their cookies, and drink their milk in one night? Isn't that a miracle? When Jesus worked miracles, he had at least three to twelve men and women as a witness. There was no secret handshakes. There was no secrecy with the Lord Jesus Christ. As we will see with this man and who he becomes. They recorded for a testimony, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Acts of the Apostles are a written record of Jesus and his apostles. They were recorded for a testimony as a fact and not a story or a suggestion. Moses did miracles. This was witnessed by all the children of Israel and the nation of Egypt. When God does something, he does it out in the open for witnesses. God will end all doubt. God will make sure you know. So, concluding. There was a Mr. Nichols. He's called Saint. By a church, without no documentation of receiving Christ, the gospel, not a wafer or a drink. He's a bishop in this church. 
He has been given by the church a holy day. He is nicknamed the wonder worker of miracles. He has a title of being a secret gift giving. He is buried in a <coughs> excuse me. He is buried in a cathedral church that bears his name. And we'll pick up the story, Lord willing, next week. Should we follow Santa Claus? Or should we dump Santa Claus? That's the question.